Hey everyone, welcome back to theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, covering day two HPE Discover, live from the Venetian Expo Center, Lisa Martin with Dave Vellante. Going to have a great conversation about digital realty and HPE's relationship, what they've seen in the last year, Dave, and we might even touch on one of your topics, repatriation. Yeah, well, so data center's hot, right? I mean, it's been sort of booming for the last decade, and it's, it's, it's heating up, thanks to Generative AI, which as we know, don't touch the AI, it's... Too hot. Yeah. <laughs> Please welcome back one of our guests, Xavier Poisson, Global Vice President, Service Providers Business at HPE. And Colin McLean joins us as well, the Chief Revenue Officer at Digital Realty. Guys, it's great to have you on theCUBE. Thank you. Hi. Hey guys. Good so a you. year since the relationship was announced, can't believe it's been already 12 months, 300 plus data centers, 50 plus metros, 27 countries, a global ex partner partnership delivering a consistent experience across customers. What are some of the market changes, Xavier, you've seen in the last year? And are some of the things that you discussed last year still relevant? And then Colin will ask you the same question. So I believe that uh, in most of the countries uh, on the planet, we have seen new factors coming, which uh, are the development of uh, new kind of applications at the edge in different segments, in different uh, industry verticals that are driving to even more consumption at the edge. The second point that I have seen dramatically, and this is because of the uncertainty, the political uncertainty, and um, everything around the, the consequences of the COVID, is um, all about uh, bringing back uh, the digital asset in countries. Meaning, I don't, I don't like to use the term sovereignty. And at the same time, people want to consume local services in every single country. And if you combine that with the edge, and we could discuss on sovereignty for years, but if you com combine that with the edge, this is creating an opportunity for digital realty plus Juliet Packard Enterprise, which is absolutely unique on the market. What are your thoughts, Colin, in terms of, of the, la the market changes in the last year? Do you agree with Xavier? Obviously a great partnership here, and some sure. of the things that were discussed last year, I know you weren't here, but yeah. the relevance today is the Certainly. market is so different. Yeah, well we're ecstatic with the HPE partnership, for one. I mean, we've, we've seen some already some great wins uh, on, the, on the docket and in the books and a growing pipeline overall. We feel like we complement what HPE is doing in Green Lake in a significant way. I mean, certainly the fact that we've all adopted this kind of hybrid, hybrid IT, hybrid cloud strategy, this multi-cloud world in which we're living in, and the simplistic ability to deliver a, you know, a single bill, a single platform strategy that HP can deliver, we, we completely support that ubiquitously, really, because clients are seeing, seeing more and more needs to go global uh, across our larger footprint. So just like HPE, uh, we have a large footprint across, as you mentioned, 300 plus data centers, 50 plus metros uh, across the globe. So we talked quite a bit last year about that hybrid IT trend. We've seen it. I think that's complemented with what we're seeing in cloud, which cloud continues to grow, both public and private, uh, as well as this emergence of AI, which you mentioned, uh, which is a really interesting proposition. So we think that there's huge inroads of partnership. We're just getting started and we're excited to see where things go. And if I may, Anna, to, just to complement on the trends with what you said and what I say, uh, there is a new conscience everywhere in the world around sustainability. Because what I would say that in the past, people were speaking about that, now they have rules they need to adapt to. Uh, and this is uh, valid uh, not only in Europe, where uh, you know the EU Commission is putting very strict rules for data centers and cloud. And likewise, you know, uh, in the US now, we see that coming also. And um, when you combine the two forces of the company in this direction to offer this HP GreenLake powered solution, one single build, something really uh, for the customer, with these two companies who have done a fantastic job, HPE on one side, digital reality on the other side, on this sustainable effect, I believe that there is a road to go. Mm. Okay, so everybody has some cloud, uh, sure. but not everything's in the cloud. Uh, and so I'm inferring that you consider a digital realty colo as an edge to the cloud, potentially, and then maybe it connects to your data center, maybe not, and then there's all kinds of other edges out there, so how do you think about edge? So this is always the conversation we had already some years ago, cloud <laughs> is everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what we offer is the cloud that comes to you. We need to stop thinking of cloud as a public cloud. Stop. Uh, the cloud may be in public cloud, it may be on-prem, it may be just within a colo, it may be through a service provider. 
And we, when you look at the expansion of uh, the, the power of the local service providers everywhere on the planet, this is exploding, man. It's not only the public cloud. Cloud is a delivery model. And what we are building together, and for end user customers, and for service providers, why not? Because what we do applies also to service providers. Is the cloud that comes to you with two big partners, HP and Digital Realty, to have one single cloud that is fitting with your requirements. Sometimes, out of that, people may go to the public cloud. Sometimes, they will only keep private cloud. We don't care at one point of time about that because we bring the platform that enables them to do everything they want to do. And you know that uh, when we power, uh, we, we bring systems into digital reality collocation, we use their power, they, we use all the efficiency they bring on that, and we put on top the, the HP GreenA Cloud Platform. And from there, you can do what you want. So for me, I remain on that. I told you that a few years ago. Yes, but this is it. Okay, but you're very passionate about this, and I appreciate that passion. But I see the figures, man. I, 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 I see the figures. So, but I will say this. While it's true, we talked about this a couple of years ago, you weren't in the position to be as forceful as you are today. Exactly. Because of where GreenLake is yeah. and how it has matured. Before, it was, you know, you had some services and you could cobble it together. Today, it's a true cloud operating model. And that's, and that's different. I, th I think so, and also your, the, the point I was trying to make too about it being a hybrid world is it's very much use case driven in terms of where a particular workload's going to live. And so whether that is, to, to get specific apologies, public or private, where it's going to live, whether you might have access requirements in a co-location data center to a cloud, uh, one of the big three, that we feel like co-location is an enabler for that workload to actually support its requirements wherever it may be. And so most often we feel like that's probably best placed in co-location in some ways because the varying density requirements that are associated with workload today. I mean, we're not just talking about the AI, AI that's running high density um, now to the rack. I mean, you're seeing much more standard enterprise compute that can be eight, 10, 12, 15, 20 kW per rack which is in, many, in much ways enabled by what you can do within co-location. Yeah, I mean, everybody talks about data and gravity, we've talked about it for years, but the, data, the, the numbers don't lie. Only 14%, and I apologize, I'm going to use public cloud, but only 14% of customers will tell you they're all in on the public cloud. And if you ask them how that's going to change over the next two or three years, flat. Right. So, the vast majority of customers are hybrid. You guys have been saying that for a while, and there's exactly. no debate anymore. Right. Exactly, right. and uh, when you see the, the rhythm of uh, data creation at the edge with sensors, with uh, all the new uh, digitization process in vertical industries, all the data needs to be there also for latency purpose. And this is where it's very interesting what we are doing, because we bring the global solution near the customer. And this, has, I believe, has a fantastic effect. Not speaking about the security aspect of that, because security is now a topic which is in the mind of every single customer. These customers may be end user, they may be service providers, and they care about that. And the reliability of what we get together, combining the assets of HP on the stack with HP GreenLake and so on, and what digital reality has done to enhance the security everywhere is absolutely unique. You can speak about the security aspect of what you do. It's uh, really uh, amazing. I'd love uh, to hear more I'd about I'd that. I'd love you to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well I mean certainly we, we have a you know, high standard of resiliency, both physical and logical security within the framework of our co-location data centers. And so clients um, oftentimes have a particular expectation to make sure workload is within, whether I can touch or feel or see it within co-location versus it living and ubiquitously in the cloud. I mean, one thing we've been consistent about is we're a big fan of the clouds. We do, we're, we consider them partners. We consider us a core part of the, the supply chain. Cloud has been great for your and business. Cloud, cloud's <laughs> been great for us, so we're a big fan of cloud, but we also recognize that there is some private workload that needs to sit in co-location data centers because of the security requirements um, that, that, that certain clients have. And, and we feel like that's justifiable. And in fact, we'll help our businesses grow. How have you seen things change, Colin, that particularly as we've seen the last, the last few years of obviously major macroeconomic changes, but the security and the risk landscape has changed so much. In the last year alone, you know, we, we've, in the last couple of years, we've been talking a lot about cyber resiliency sure. and how customers are on that journey. How is Digital Realty with HPE and GreenLake helping customers on that journey to cyber resilience? And what does it look like when yeah, you well, get there, yeah, if so you can? 
So, so I think certainly one of the things we've been consistent about is that we're really good at what we do. We're kind of core layer zero to the overall ecosystem. Um, but we partner with, with key folks like HPE to really help deliver that security at a robust level. So we don't go up the stack in terms of delivering additional services. So we have a key resiliency in terms of cybersecurity, have robust standards, both physical and, and logical, because remember, we actually have a physical asset layer that we have to protect. Um, but, but there is a, a keen sense of making sure that customers want their data protected. Again, one of the values of co-location, so we put a, a keen value on that. So if I have HP inside of a digital realty facility, and I'm a customer, what, it, Staying on security, what's my responsibility? What's your responsibility? What's that dividing line look like? So, um, we can speak about security from all the layers of the security stack. What I can tell you is that from the GreenLake, HP GreenLake uh, cloud platform, you will be able to monitor everything that is happening on your infrastructure uh, from end to end. So this is uh, something that is granting. I just want to call back the fact that uh, Everything that we do is based on the single root of trust uh, with uh, attestation agents that are conveyed by HP GreenLake in order that all your workloads are secure. Now, beyond the, simply the VMs, uh, HP has done a lot of investment through uh, how we can manage distributed identity in a secure way. And this is what we did when we acquired uh, Spiffy Inspire, for instance, to go up to uh, getting microservices, uh, being really discussing together, not with the notion of a secret, but really discussing together with attestation that everything is coming together. So we come from the, the hardware layer with the zero, trust, the, zero, the zero trust, and we move up the, the layers up to the application layer. So we are there on, uh, on that. And for the physical security, for the telecommunication security, for the links, this is there. And so we bring to the customer an end-to-end -end, uh, contract, and an end-to-end -end capability, an end-to-end -end value proposition on SLA, service level agreements, that they can get, and this is the beauty of, the, of joining the forces. What about repatriation? Um, are you guys repatriates? Or, or do you see, uh, you know, what, yeah. do the, what does the data tell you? You're seeing the cloud growth you know, come down, actually the on-prem growth has ticked up in many cases, right. and there seems to be a, a little bit of an equilibrium possibly, but what are you seeing you know, on, the, on the ground with customers? So I, I think I'll get back to the point I was making, it's really workload centric in terms of what we're seeing. There are certainly use cases, and we're seeing it today, where repatriation makes sense, whether it's for cost or performance reasons, and we're in the middle of several deals now, right now that I can tell you that are emphatically repatriation oriented in terms of their approach. There's a lot of reason in some cases to keep data in the cloud, in the public cloud with the CSPs or whoever it may be, um, for, for a number of reasons, flexibility, cost. Expensive as hell to get out. It, 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 <laughs> you know, in, in some ways it is a challenge um, to go the other direction. What it's proven over time is there are particular use cases that the cost proves out significantly that going. It's a business public, case is what you're saying. It, it very much is. So it's not a one size fits all conversation. I, I personally don't see many organizations going completely out of the cloud. I think they're always going to have a cloud presence. Yep. Um, it's a matter of what particular workload lends itself best in co-location. So we talk a lot about right customer, right location, right workload. It's really understanding what they're trying to accomplish and achieve and then make the best recommendation. I, I would add something because um, it's not only about uh, I choose where I go. For certain, for certain industries and for some government data, you have new regulations coming. So if you know in Europe the EUCS uh, template, this will enforce that uh, certain class of, class of data will be in cloud managed by European people and owned by European people. But this is expanding also. You take, it's the same case in India. So if you look at the planet, you have movements coming regarding where the new workloads of sensitive data needs to stay. And it may be, it may be uh, on-prem with the data, within the data center of a customer, or it may be with a service provider would be using our stack into a national service, uh, national data center, a data center in the country where they want to operate. So it's not only uh, workload, it's not only cost, it's also regulation. Yeah. This is the point I want to make because we often forget it, and there is a big movement on the planet coming out of uh, the geopolitical uncertainties and so on. Why don't you like the term 
sovereignty. Can you explain that? Well, because it has been uh, used in so many uh, different ways. What I like to, to use as a word is trust. And trust on compliance to prerequisites that have been done regarding certain class of data. Because sovereignty is, everybody uses this word for everything. But um, we see that, you know, uh, and there are very big new opportunities across the world of uh, new ecosystems in vertical industries, uh, crossing data together between themselves to create value out of the data. This is what is called the data economy. And for that, you need also to play with trust. And it's not only in the public cloud, because when you have a comprehensive value chain that nobody wants anybody else to look after, you need to do it in a certain cloud. This cloud may be uh, your cloud as an end user or a group of end users, or it may be you decide as a group of companies to host it with a service provider. Mm. And this is where we come into the game, because we can offer the right solution in all the countries that uh, digital reality is covering. Then you must have some great customer story examples of successes that you want to share with us that really show the power of the partnership, the capabilities, and also the sustainability angle. I would love yes. to hear. Absolutely, you, you have a fantastic one on uh, FSI, yeah? Yeah, we, we do. We, we, have, we have a global FSI partner that we were able to secure a right story with. I think the security perspective really on that private cloud was one that really heightened their interest. Another one that comes to mind is we had another global customer who had a multi-site requirement fit our footprint really, really well. Uh, we align with the sales teams. I mean, one of the things that we've, we've really valued is HPE brings a tremendous expertise, frankly, that, that we don't bring to bear, um, that we can add to our own customer set. So we complement each other really well. Our sales teams have worked, I think, tremendously, and we're seeing great inroads in the future because, as we talked about, this is very much a hybrid world, but it's a global world. And so clients, particularly the global 2000s, are seeing a robust requirement to say, I need requirements where my folks are, and oftentimes they're in Frankfurt, or they're in Amsterdam, or they're in Austin, or they're in Africa. Um, and so we're able to deliver that with HPE really effectively. Excellent, guys, thank you so much for joining Dave and me on the program, really sharing what's transpired in the last year for Digital Realty, HPE, and where you're going in the future. We appreciate your insights and your time. Great. Thank, thank you so guys. much. Great it's to been see you our here. pleasure. For Goodbye. our guests and Dave Vellante, I'm Lisa Martin. Up next, HPE experts are going to join us to talk about HPE Asmaral Software and HPE GreenLake for Private Cloud Enterprise, how they're both hybrid by design and working in tandem to extract actionable insights from data. We'll see you in just a few minutes.